come out of her, my people. All truth is not kind here. There's a bitter truth as well as a sweet truth. Come out of her, my people. Ah, greetings, 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 greetings. Shalom, shalom, shalom to each and every last one of you in the sweet presence of strong and victorious and mighty overcoming name of our soon coming King, Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. I hope and, and, uh, and, and I'm hoping that each and every last one of you are encouraged today. Man, I, I had a day all planned out to spend with Brother Steve because we had a lot of things we needed to do on the website. Um, as you can see, uh, we've been very busy with the updating of the website, and I appreciate Brother Steve all his labor because he um, um, diligently, um, I mean, he diligently, without hesitation, without fail, has the, the gifts of helps, and he definitely wants to help to get the word out in a straight way. Um, you'll notice that there are new charts up on the board. Um, I'm working on, and I have been working on, um, on the feast day calendar of the Most High Yahweh, uh, for 2013, and uh, Brother Steve and I are going to work on that. I'm going to send the information. Brother Steve's going to put it together, and um, that way we'll have a calendar for the saints of the Most High for all the feast uh, and the Shabbats, the high holy days uh, for 2013. Uh, so that way we won't have to um, ask everybody, well, when is this feast or when is that feast, when is this feast and when is that feast? We have it all ready, all laid out for you. Y'all give me a radio check and let me know, you know, the routine. How I'm coming in on the, the mic right here. I turned the uh, sensitivity down just a little bit, just a little bit. Uh, it's good to see each and every last one of you. Uh, you know that I've done everything I can uh, over the year 2012 to get out and to minister to the saints of the Most High. Oh, at great expense too, because it's very tiring going out and ministering and stuff. I've been in from I've been from one end of this coast of the land all the way to the other, uh, ministering the truth in the true straight way. I hope that each and every last one of you uh, enjoyed um, Shabbat service. I know it was long, but it was necessary. Uh, we're working on our sound system to where we don't get the mics. Oh, excuse me, but the mics are so hot. We're working on the sound system that the mic, certain mics are not so hot, but we'll get it together one day. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. Um, I hope, I really truly hope that you're staying the course in your preparations. I, I really truly do. I really hope that you're staying the course in preparations. Hopefully we're going to have a, a slot put up on the um, web page as well as the online church. Uh, for donations for the um, building fund, building fund that we're going to be doing now. I, I'm taking up the building fund and stuff, but not one nickel and one not one dime of this building fund is going to me. It's going to the saints of the most high. We're going to be looking for a, a little small, short piece of land that we could put maybe a home or two on uh, to house some of the saints and maybe build a, like a little bug out place for people who uh, may need somewhere to relocate in the last moment or the heat of moment, depending on how this situation is going with this economy today. Things are not looking good. Things are looking very dire. Um, and I hope you haven't stopped your preparations. I went to the store early, early, early this morning. I came back, uh, I don't know, anywhere between six and ten cans of Hormel chili with beans. Um, and another thing of peanut butter. I got a pretty good thing of peanut butter. Um, and um, and I, I'm. I, I, it seems like now that every time I go out, I'm bringing something home to store. I mean, we have it in storage sheds, we have it in closets, we have it behind bookshelves, we have it under beds, we have food all over the place. Now the saints are storing and stacking food in their homes here straightway, which I hope that they're doing, um, because I know we're doing water, but um, I, I don't have a lick of confidence in our society. Um, and what's going on with with the way that uh, the course of this world is running. I really truly don't. And I'm sitting there looking at, you remember during God's, we talked about displaced refugees uh, during one of the teachings. Even when I was out speaking with the saints, I was giving scenarios and examples. Uh, any, any of y'all remember that? I was giving scenarios and examples of how that 
when you have natural disasters, catastrophes, and, and uh, things take place such as tornadoes, hurricanes, earthquakes, whatever, um, you watch the function of people and you watch and see how their mindset is trained and watch and see how they behave. Yeah, you know, some of you do remember. Um, I started talking about displaced refugees um, given these particular situations. And in New York, yeah, huh. in New York and New Jersey, it's bad. It's really bad, Saints. They're talking about now considering opening up one of the prisons that are closed in order to house some of the people who have literally lost everything. We were familiar with Brother Randy when he called in on um, Shabbat night, and he lets us know that they, these people's lives are over. Don't you expect the insurance company to make good? They're not going to make good on anything that they say because there's just too many natural disasters. The country is being sucked dry. The country is bankrupt. Do y'all hear me, people? And I don't believe for one bit that these, um, I mean, think about this for a moment. Here's this Sandy. They put it in the minds that it's a category one. Are y'all following my train of thought? Just track with me for a moment. So if you're telling everybody that it's a category one, all right, don't come up with all this, this, this other crazy stuff after the effect and after the fact. If you're telling everybody it's a category one, there's not too many people that's going to take that too serious and then move. They're not going to set up and just uproot and move over Category 1. Now, if you mention something like a Category 5 like Katrina was and uh, Katrina and all these other places, hey, they some of them, they, they jet and get up out of there. But when you automatically through the news media, controlled, propagandized news media, and, and you already put the people's minds that you are dealing with a Category 1 and then this book of hits like a 5, what you expect? the people to be what hey this stuff is calculated and this stuff is done on purpose that's why i keep telling you 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 got to get out of the mindset of functioning after these people and these sources today you've got to think independently i, I can't teach you that i really truly can't you got to come out you got to come out naturally you got to come out spiritually in order to be able to calculate compute and think right um pending that all the things that these People are, are, are putting out the disinformation, the misinformation is off the chain. It is literally off the chain. And you know, the sad part about it is most of us are so ingrained into this system that we still will go glue eyes and bug eyes to this TV set to do everything that they suggest and think, including experts say, <clears throat> experts say, <clears throat> studies show, <clears throat> experts say, <clears throat> I tell you what, it's a sad, sad thing. It's a sad state of affairs. Um, I'm being very optimistic by telling you that the nation's economy is not going to get any better. It's not. Uh, some of the people who have actually uprooted and moved into this area have made a very wise move. Because if crap hit the fan, we're going to watch out for our fellow brothers and sisters, our fellow Israelite brothers and sisters we are. We're going to watch out for them. Um, we have, we're trying to get people to learn how to change your mindset right now because when you get into a situation where you have to stack people up like sardines, spirits are going to fly, attitudes going to fly, and that's the reason why that you need to start exercising your mind and your conscious uh, uh, um, in a community mindset, in a community environment. So when you do have to make the change, the psychological effects of that change is not as, as stressing and taxing and dire upon you uh, as it was if you had to uproot from your area because, hey, individual homes, you scattered away from us, hey, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 miles, we can't protect you. We can't defend you um, against the mob and the people going crazy. Um, I tell you, it, it, it's remarkable. It is. Now, I talked to the watchman today on the telephone, and you know we got like 15 countries in front of us when it comes to uh uh, the economy and, and they're a whole lot better off. Matter of fact, some of these countries are Hong Kong, Singapore, New Zealand, Switzerland, Australia, Bahrain, uh, Mistrus, um, Canada, Finland, Chile, UAE, Ireland, UK, Estonia, Taiwan, Denmark, and Qatar. Can you believe that? All them countries are doing better than the United States of America and we used to just trade back and forth in one and two. Y'all see the decline? Y'all keep seeing the decline? Y'all getting it before? Um, I, I tell you what, we went from a gold back dollar to a petrodollar to a dollar that's not based on nothing no more because 
we're finished. Ain't nobody making any money off of it. Um, but anyway, I'm working on the feast day calendars. Brother Steve and I were going to be working on getting a couple of bubble tabs up and stuff for uh, the donation tab. Like I said, we probably got about $1,000 or $1,100 as far as donations for the building fund that has come in. Uh, I hadn't mentioned much about it because I hadn't had time to slow down and get things together. I uh, look up one week. It's the beginning of November. I, I, I lay my head down. I look up again. Now we're at the middle of November. We're staring at the 11th day of this month already. And it's just utterly, utterly, utterly amazing. Hallelujah. But we got a lot of refugees in this country over in New York, uh, New Jersey area. And it's, it's, uh, it's disheartening because where were they pastors at to prepare them for this time that's coming up that is up on them right now? You know, at least to prepare. Hmm. Where they at? Like I said the other day, I only know two is actually warning the people. And that's true as far as pastors go. Well, all right. Without further ado, we're going to go ahead and go to the uh, phone line. And it uh, looks like we got the old faithful in here. We got Junior online first. Hallelujah. Let me go ahead and put this up right here. All right. Come on, Junior. New York, New York, big city of dreams. Everything in New York ain't always what it seems. Three four seven, you you on the air, bro, Junior? Come on with it. Shabbat shalom, Pastor. Shalom, Saints. Shabbat shalom, Junior. Shabbat shalom. But except it's only the shalom because Shabbat is already over. Shalom, yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, um, Pastor. Um, you yeah, know, I see. I now uh, see your views no more. Your own, um, your own church, your own um, broadcast, your own um, box of broadcast now because. My phone got shut down the router this week, so I still ain't gonna give up. I got a game plan too. I don't actually think that um, I'm gonna call my house, then call my house, call my house right? right? I used to your service on Tuesday in, in Saturday service. My house phone, I had a game plan. Good. They don't try to drive me out the house because they, they get uncomfortable. They'll get uncomfortable. You try to drive and say, Oh, you still believe you're a family, right? Move out, move out because they can't take the heat from no side. They can't, they can't take that. They can't I, take it. I tell you what I ain't I, going nowhere. I'm staying here. I tell you what I do, brother Junior. If I was you, if you've already done preached the truth to these people, brother, just just be quiet and leave them alone to themselves, brother. That's what I would do. I know. I know. He's saying, yeah, he can't. He can't take his router. I can't handle internet no more. Um, watch, watch your videos. Your um, side service. Your um, your um, Tuesday. But I still ain't watching them over. Still, I can listen over the phone. You know what, Junior, what's amazing to me is that anytime you know that you got to be in the truth because, brother, we, we never got that kind of opposition and resistance when we were in Christianity. But, boy, when people start coming yes, to this truth, man, people fight us as if we are serial killers and murderers, brother, and all we are doing is the truth. But remember, marvel not because, remember, Yahshua said that that would happen to you. Too. I was just in um, all the persecution. I take persecution. No, one they want to throw me out so bad. You know, you work so bad because devil can't take the heat. They cannot take the heat. I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> I ain't going nowhere. I ain't comfortable, you know what I mean, but I ain't going nowhere. I want to right. fight more. Huh? It's like me when well, I move out. I feel like I'm losing the fight. You see what I mean, right? Hey, Amen. How, how are the people I'm doing up there? Huh? How are the people doing up Excuse there? Excuse me? I can't hear you. You're breaking, you're breaking up a bit. How, how are the people doing up there in the New York area? Why are they doing good? They ain't, people, they brainwashed. I mean, they ain't got, we ain't got hit at all, but the area, like, the fact area's doing bad. It's still, like, long, long line for gas, long line for food, everything. Mm. Affected areas. Mercy. No power, no nothing. I don't, see no loom, I don't see a loom going on here, though. Because police around here, that's why. All right, brother Junior, man, it sure is good hearing from you, Pastor. Pastor, um, that's what I'm about to say. Um, man, people they going they constrict, they going to normal. So you know what? They ain't learned nothing from it. I learned something from this. They ain't learned nothing. The people in New York, they ain't ready for a hurricane journey. They not ready. Right, I understand. Well, you yeah. stay the course, brother Junior. Yeah. You stay encouraged, okay, brother. I will. I will. All right, Shalom, Shalom, Pastor. Shalom, Shalom, Brother Junior. Mm -hmm. That's good hearing from Brother Junior. Really, truly is good hearing from Brother Junior. 
Glory, glory, glory to the king. Oh, man, we look like our board here is messing up just a little bit there. All right, where we at? Uh, 910. Uh, let's like Brother Jesus. Brother Jesus, it's Pastor Dow. What you got, brother? Shalom, 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 everybody. How you doing, Pastor Dow? Shalom, Brother Jesus. I'm doing well, brother. Had a nice day. Doing well. It was a beautiful day today, Pastor Dow. It was a beautiful day here in Virginia as well. I'll tell you what. Um, I'm, I'm glad that Brother Junior is doing well. Really, really encourages me. Um, what do I have today for you, Pastor Dow? Um, I have a question for you, Pastor Dow. Um, I was, uh, I came across this particular verse and which says that if you turn your, a deaf ear from hearing my laws, even your prayers are an abomination to me. Um, so my question is like, whenever like, you know, a Christian prays, basically people who don't follow the commandments that Yahweh is not going to be listening to them. Pretty much, that's what that, that the particular verse is saying, correct? Well, I mean, that's a perspective that you're bringing forth, but you remember the Most High is very merciful and gracious, but what he does is he meets us exactly where we're at. Christians don't know his law. They've been deceived like we all were. I mean, I can tell you many, many times um, when I was in the religion of Christianity and did not know his law, that I would pray earnestly and he would hear me. And he would have mercy on my soul because based on my heart condition. Uh, but as I okay. but as I started to grow in grace and grow in mercy and grow in knowledge, um, he expects a whole lot more out of us, especially in his growth. Because to much is given, much is required. So you yeah, know, yeah, right. these people have to have a good understanding of what his law is and how to obey his law because they've been so deceived by this system that has been set up in front of us. Okay, uh, <clears throat> I see what you're saying. So now, now, listen, like, hold on, listen to me. Yahweh, yeah, let me, finish this, let me finish this thought for one second here. You have to understand, right. it says he that turn his ear from hearing the law. You mean you have to know the law before you could turn your ear from it as well. Okay. So it's not coming from the perspective of people who don't know the law. It's actually, the book is written to us. It's written to us Israelites. Okay, okay, I got you, Pastor. Now, All right. that's uh, that's what I was I, that's what I was gonna get at then. When, um, so basically, you know, let's say a Christian prays, he's gonna see what's in the heart, pretty much, correct? Pretty much. Okay, uh, that makes that makes sense to me now. Okay, I got you, Pastor. Now, um, that's it then, Pastor. Now, that was my question. Uh, I don't wanna take up too much of your time today. Uh, I did watch uh, one of your uh, scripture studies today uh, on holiness. I, I really enjoyed it, Pastor. Dow. It really resonated in my heart because, uh, uh, you know, uh, I really, you know, before when I when this whole you know demonic thing happened to me, I was in a position really where I was really backsliding against Yahweh, and just that whole experience, you know, brought me back into the, into the way and just encouraged me a whole lot and listening to your scripture studies and just uh, it's just encouraging Pastor Dow every day. And it definitely just makes me want to just continue on the path. I just want to say that, Pastor Dow. Well, yes, sir. By all means, stay the course, brother. Stay the course. All right? All right. Shalom, Pastor Dow. Shalom, shalom. Good hearing from Brother Jesus. He always comes with very encouraging words, good uh, questions to help stimulate the thought. And we bless the Father for that. We're going to go to Brother Rufus, 615. Come on, Brother Rufus. What you got, my brother? Bless you, Pastor. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Bless you, man, y'all. Um, I got a couple things on my heart. I know you're doing fine. I heard everybody else ask you, so um, I'm doing well, too. I'm just headed home. Um, you can hear me, right, Pastor? Yes, sir. Crystal clear. Okay. Hallelujah. Glory. Um, I just noticed, I mean, I know you talked about this a little bit ago, a few months ago, about how seasonal-wise, weather-wise, we're like a month ahead, mm -hmm. and... Uh, I've been noticing, like, in the mornings, the car be frozen and everything. And then, like, I noticed last night uh, for Shabbat that, um, uh, like, 6 o'clock, it was just totally dark. And uh, so I pulled up on the, uh, uh, the the sunset times and stuff they have in there, and I noticed that it said sun, the sun's supposed to set, like, at 539 in our area. And I'm like, man, I remember vividly last year when I started working at this uh, job at Amazon, that 
we didn't have that issue, you know, because that we was, was a concern of ours because of, you know, uh, when they was going to this uh, 60 hour mandatory. So that would make me have to work on Friday. Right. And uh, I'm like, well, hey, well, we got to get out of here. You know, me and brother was like, we got to be out of here, you know, for Shabbat. And if the sun is going down at 530, you know, we got to be out of here. Uh, by five o'clock, and uh, but that was in December, you know, because we didn't brother didn't start till a couple weeks after me. I didn't start until November twenty seventh, you know, and this was like we had been there for a month, and I'm like, man, now here it is, the beginning of November, and the sun's already going down at five thirty six o'clock, and I'm like, wow. So then yesterday, uh, of course, at the service, you know, um, we had some deliverance and things of that magnitude, and. Um, it was just really heavy on my heart that, you know, that precious moment that we have when we're in deliverance and, and assisting um, to cast these demons out, you know, where, where we wrestle with the people and wrestle with, you know, to hold them down and demons try to put them and all this kind of mess. But it was just like, and I, I just, I'm, I guess I'm putting, it's kind of like a question, but, you know, I kind of want you to comment on it. That's what I want you to do is uh, see if I'm in the, in the vein and, uh, but it's like I just had this really heavy feeling on my heart, like these times are really precious. I mean, we're not going to have a lot of more opportunities like this to, you know, to, to even help with deliverance and things of that magnitude. You know, and I was just expressing to the brothers, we need to get, we need to get these hearts right, man. We've got to turn from this mess that, that has given gateways and doorways to these people, you know, because we cast not these spirits, but you must try to go right back and doing the same thing and dealing with the same people and talking the same lingo. They coming back with seven friends, brother. And it's gonna get. I mean, this thing is really, really ramping up. And I just was wanted to box that off and see if my spirit is right on this thing. Is just because I just it was overwhelming on me, Pastor. Like, man, after we got done with the first delivery, I was like, man, this, we just not gonna get many more opportunities like this to help folks. So, I mean, what do you think about that, Pastor? I agree with you 100, percent brother Rupus. They're gonna start cracking down on a lot of things, but um, hey, time is being accelerated. You see, I, I've I've got this theory. And it's only a theory. It's only my opinion. I have nothing to mm -hmm. back this up. There's nothing scripture about it. But, you know, the most high, um, he can turn around and shave seconds off of a minute. And we still think it's a minute because we're in his realm and spirit. So he can shorten the days and the days are being shortened. Um, mm. But, brother, I, I, I look at everything brother, that's going on today. I don't care what it is from a biblical point of view. I really truly do because that way I can see clearly what's happening and what's going on because if I try to understand this from a natural standpoint and viewpoint, brother, I'll be like a lot of them people up there in New York right now. I'll be sitting up there or lost with everything or things that my whole world turned upside down depending on the system to take care of me and stuff and I'll be in bad, bad shape but I think y'all that brother, that I'm able to listen to what he has to say, but brother, we don't have time to be fooling around. Jesus clearly said, you get this unclean spirit cast out of you, you go back and you sin again, seven more spirits going to enter in. They're going to be worse than the one that you had got out at first, and this is and it's very serious. That's why we're seeing so many people fall away from the ministry. They come here for the deliverance ministry. We have it during Passover. We have it during God's. And every and you know every time we have these big meetings, they get these spirits cast out. And then they go back to their life, not taking it serious, not wanting to really truly be holy, not being clean through the word. They pick up these spirits back again. Next thing you know, they cast off and they're gone. The devil got them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was pastor, hallelujah. It was just so heavy on my heart, and I tell you, it was. And, and, and I mean, of course, we're doing what we can do to warn the folk and. The, Harem and all that, and I mean, it's just, it's just, man, I mean, this thing is literally heavy now. Don't get me wrong, I'm still encouraged in a way, you know, and, and I'm not discouraged at all, but it's just like when you, when you help and focus the system on them, but you still can see certain aspects of their life is allowing these demons in and giving them place to come back in. It's like, man, y'all don't understand what you're doing, and when you try to warn them, you try to tell them, and you know, it's just, it was just really heavy on my heart. Like, man, these opportunities we got right now that, you know, when we were done and we were filling the brother up, I'm like, it's just, man, this thing about to be few and far between. I mean, it's just, you know, folk going to be wanting this, but it, this is not going to be available to people. You know, th th this just not going to be it no more. You know, Brother Rufus, so, the Bible says mm -hmm. in, the, in the book of Revelations, 
that the people in the end day and end times would not repent for the worshiping of devils. Now, like mm -hmm. I said the other day, you think about this. You got ministries who claim to be servants of the most high, yet they will not tear down Satan's kingdom. They will not cast out devils. They will not heal the sick and do all the things that, that the Messiah said do. Brother, I think that they're actually on the side of the devil. It's just a subtle way of going about doing it because they're not tearing down his kingdom. I fully agree with you, Pastor. And I remember sharing some things with some folk and um, just telling them, you know, this, this, this two-sided thing, that's one of the biggest deceptions the devil has pulled over your eyes, making you think you can dabble in sin, and but you compare yourself to other folk, and I'm better than them because I ain't doing this and I ain't doing this. And, you know, sin, sin at the end of the day. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, liars going to the same place the doctor's going to. Right. You know, you're going to the same spot, you right. know, so... Uh, that deception that he didn't pull over people's eyes. And then, you know, that mentality that we just got time, you know, it's going to get better and no. it will change. And Well, what's going to make it change? What's the concrete evidence you have that's going to make it change? Now, when you look at history, it shows you flat out it ain't going to change. It's going to change, all right, for the worse. Yeah. <laughs> but it ain't changing for the better. And it's like, oh, you know, it's like battling up against a brick wall, but I just know that was really, really heavy on my heart, Pastor, and I was like, man, I'm going to call the show tonight on my way home, because I just want to make sure I'm in the vein, and, and you know, passing and feeling the same way, but I just, I was stressing it to the brothers, I'm like, man, we don't have a lot of time left to get this thing right, I mean, we just don't, so we really, really, really have to go at this thing hard, and I mean, Pastor's not preaching on spiritual warfare for his health, he ain't preaching on it uh, uh, just because he desires to, you know what I mean? Just because it's the best thing to do. No, he's doing this because this is what's needed, and we have to get our mindset in that mode right now and get these things changed mentally and, and, and start to really engage in this spiritual battle. So, hallelujah. Yeah. I mm. tell you right now, brother, that deliverance is one of the quickest pathway to sanctification and holiness. And... I, it takes a little time for people to get holy. And I know it does because I've been in this yeah. for a while. And if people are not working on being holy now, it's just like the, the, the parable of the five wise and five foolish. You got people that's going to be torn around. People going to be playing games. People going to be doing this all the way up until the coming of the Messiah. Then they're going to want to come and run to us who have got oil in our lamps. And I'm going to flat out tell them, no, I ain't got none for you. No, you, you know, mm. go by. See you later. I'm going to tell them straight up because I'm not giving them none of my oil when we had all this time to get our lamps full and burning bright. I'm in 100% agreement. I'm not doing it either. Hallelujah. Well, Pastor, I ain't going to take it one more time. I know you probably got a few more folk on the call. Q, bless you, brother. Um, I love you, Pastor. And uh, tell the saints there we love them, and uh, hopefully we'll be seeing them in the next few weeks. All right. Shalom, shalom. Shalom. I couldn't hear from Brother Rufus. We're going to go to Ohio, 419. 419. Pastor Dow, what you got? All right, Pastor a, Dow? Let me pull you back up again. Yeah, this is me. Pastor Dow, how you doing? Doing well. Uh, this is the lady that, uh, the sister that sent the letter last week. The sister that sent the letter last week. Which one? Yes, the one you mentioned on, the one when I was asking you about the language. Oh, how you did, did, <laughs> did you did you get my email? Oh yes, I did. did yes, I, I did. I, th I thank you very very much for responding and taking the time out to do that. In fact, that has never happened, and um, I tell you, I'm just very honored by that. Did did I explain it good enough? Yes, you did. Yes, you did. <laughs> hey, hey, you know yes, what? You I, I could say, I could, I could say this. I could say, tush y'all with that. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> I just want to tell you, I have been watching um, your services and listening to the the live radio like I'm doing now. I can see you. And uh, I take this is this is an awesome experience for me and my husband. It really, really is. We... You know, we've been trying to find a church that even uh, celebrates and honors the Sabbath. Oh. And we haven't found one in years. It's rough. It's rough, sister. You know that. <laughs> yes, it is very rough. And when I came across you on the Internet, it was just, 
I've been glued ever since. It's been about two weeks. And I'm watching as much as I can. I have learned so much. I mean, I really have to get my life, you know, in order. <laughs> hey, when you get an opportunity, a chance, please go back and look for those videos. Look for those videos that have, um, um, you know, um, um, what I'm uh, storing food, uh, giving survival training, um, uh, uh, teaching weapons, uh, um, you know, stuff like that. I tell you what I'm gonna do, brother Devlon, down there in uh -huh. Georgia. Brother Devlon is very good. I'm gonna give brother Devlon my password to my YouTube page so he can archive and set my YouTube page up and categorize that thing so it'll be easy for everybody to find. But just, I'm glad that you're aboard. I'm glad that the Most High is giving you ears to hear. Um, and I welcome you and your, your, your husband. Thank you very, very much. We we um, surely hope we can see you sometime. We're about seven hours from you. That's and about, I don't know about the rest of the part that's off the map. You know, we'll have to talk <laughs> that the GPS can't find. Well, you must be up there. You must be closer to Michigan then, and you must be in the upper tip part of Ohio then, right? Yes, I'm up toward Columbus, about sixty miles uh, north of it. Well, you you right there with Brother Jermaine and Brother Vernon, you and your husband. Am I? Yeah, Brother okay. Jermaine and Brother Vernon, right there in your neck of the woods. Oh, really? Okay. Well, that's great to hear. And wow! If, if you want, I'll give him your phone number so he can contact you and your husband. Okay. Um, is there any way I can do that offline? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll give I'll give Brother Jermaine your phone number, and um, and um, so so that you know nobody else would see it but them. Okay, that would be great. That would be wonderful. It's good hearing from you, Israel. It, and I tell you, I, I'm learning, and I just think. God, I thank God, and I can't wait until we can all come together, and I, I definitely want to check out that land. I've uh, never seen somebody work so hard and <laughs> just seem like you know how to do everything. I mean, that's a, just an anointing, I tell you. <laughs> hey, um, did you what, did you have an opportunity to listen? Did, did you tune in to yesterday's Shabbat service? I, I, I got to see a little bit of it. Well, it's archived. Well, that's a long one that was about four hours. Yeah, every bit of it. But you know, you can go to this website back here and always go back and pick up where you left off. Okay, I sure will. I tell you, uh, 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 Brother Dow, you, you sure can talk. I've never seen anybody talk that long. <laughs> I thought I was bad. My husband I was telling me, hush, I'm being obedient. <laughs> Like the Bible says. All right, sister. Uh, my, my husband wants to say hi before we um, sure. depart here. I know it's other people on, want to talk. Sure. But uh, thank you very much, and shalom. And here's my husband. Shalom. Welcome aboard. How you doing, Pastor Dow? Doing well, sir. Good to hear from you. Good. Good. I'm just, my wife is just listening to you, and she uh, was looking at you on the TV. I had told her a lot of things about um uh, the Sabbath and and everything, and she's just now really coming around to it, and so I, I decided I'm just gonna uh, keep going with that. Hallelujah, that's the way to go. <laughs> y'all make sure y'all look at them YouTube um, videos and go to my website, the Straightway Truth, straightwaytruth.com. Get a lot of information okay. over there, and and make sure you just stay active with the ministry. Uh, we'll do that. We'll do just that. Thank you. Yes, sir. Good to hear from you. You too. All right. Shalom. Shalom. Man, I tell you what a blessing here. There's family. Look, there's some more Israelites that the Most High just woke up. Huh? Some more Israelites are bored. Uh, the nation is, is growing. I'm going to tell you right now, there's not going to be. I'll be surprised if there will be 12,000 people saved in the United States of America. I would be utterly amazed and surprised if 12,000 people can be redeemed. I'm telling you, I'll be amazed. Glory to the King. I know us Hebrew Israelites, I know we're going to be, especially ones who listen to his ministry. We're going to go to Hawaii, then we're going to go to Brother Jermaine in Ohio. Go to Hawaii, Sister Carol, 
Sister Carol, how you doing, Sister Carol? Long time no hear. Shalom, 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 my pastor. Bless you. I was when I call you, my heart beats so fast. I don't know how to talk. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Are you enjoying I, your shirts? I beg your pardon. Are you enjoying your shirts? Oh, I do. I love them. I love them so much. <laughs> and and I would like to request for a DVD, if you don't mind. From uh, Georgia? From Georgia. Okay. We will get it to you, sister. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I just want to say, bless you and your whole family. All right, Sister Carol. It's good hearing from you. Thank you for your prayers and support. Shalom. Shalom. That was Sister Carol all the way from Hawaii. Um, amen. We're going to make sure we get it out to her. Hallelujah. All right, Brother Jermaine, Ohio, 614. Four six one four, brother Jermaine. Uh, um, did you did you hear that sister and brother just called in from Columbus? Uh, yes, I did, Pastor, and I, I definitely want to get their information. I'll, I'll make sure that I get in contact with those uh, with those saints tonight and uh, make contact. And this is just a beautiful thing. Shalom to you, Pastor, Sister Carol, to all the saints on the on on the land. And all the saints and brothers and sisters out there is spread in the diaspora. But, Pastor, I only have one question for you tonight. And then I'm, I'm having a little difficulty hearing you kind of breaking up. So I'll just, you can, once I ask the question, you can mute me or cut me off. And I'll be back in front of the computer. I had to step away so I could talk and not get any reverb. But I happened to um, download the um, the uh, Great Easter Fraud uh, sheet, uh, um, uh a poster that you did, Pastor, mm -hmm. and I just have one question for you when it comes to that, is what inspired you or led you to, uh, you know, get into that deep of a study, and, you know, because I had a chance to really detail and look at it and read it and read the scriptures that went along with it, so that that's my question, Pastor. You can mute me. I want to say again, shalom to all the family, and uh, you can go from there, Pastor. All right, shalom. I'll go ahead and do that, Brother Man. I'll answer the question. Um, it was years and years and years ago. You have to understand that we just did not come to this knowledge uh, of the Easter fraud and the chart. Um, uh, matter of fact, we stepped this thing up. I mean, it's probably about 12 years ago that I did the first chart uh, on a dry erase board in front of the, uh, the saints up there in front of the uh, tabernacle. I'm sure that many of you have saw me go over the three days and the three nights um, here in the, in the assembly. Anyway, there's been people and there's people who watch us here straightway and most people would never admit that they do, but they do. But anyway, I had a guy call me um, and email me um, in reference to that the Easter fraud chart that most of you are familiar um, seeing. There's an Easter fraud chart that is out there that most of you are familiar seeing. But anyway, this guy would email me and he would call me. Picking my mind and my brain about the three days and three nights. When did when did Jesus die? When was he resurrected? And the days and all this. And it went on for a little bit. But then when he got finished with his finished product of it, uh, he had put the NIV scriptures in it uh, and a few other things that I didn't care for. So I said, when I get some time, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to actually make an Easter fraud chart. I'm going to make the most comprehensive Easter fraud chart out there that has ever been put in front of the eyes of mankind. And so what I did, um, what I did was, is I spent hours doing that. And then I send the information to Brother Steve in Canada. Brother Steve in Canada is the one who does all our posters Brother Stephen Cannon is the one who is the, the professional of, of putting these things together. I tell him what I want. He puts it together. And we have, I mean, a numerous amounts of email and communication. And when email uh, no longer is sufficient, it does not work. And we just simply pick up the phone or we get on Skype and we talk to each other for a long time, uh, fine tuning the charts. And then even after we get finished, uh, like this chart before I posted it, I sent it to Brother Frank. Um, up there in um, Washington State, and let Brother Frank look at and put his eye on it. Um, and 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 uh, Brother Frank had a few corrections on it, which was very paramount. And so Brother Frank put the corrections in. I sent the corrections to Brother Steve. Uh, it was only like one, two or three corrections that he said that he would change. Um, and I looked at them, considered them, seeing that they were right, and we incorporated it with the Easter fraud chart. 
Um, and so, Brother Steve, uh, uh, I told Brother Steve, I said, Brother Steve, I, Brother, you do a lot of work for us, but I, there's a lot of people that's going to be looking at this chart. And so, Brother Steve, I want you to put down your information at the bottom right corner as well, uh, because who knows? Somebody may want uh, you to do some work for them after they see the wonderful work you're doing here with this chart. And so that's how that that, that chart has, has come about. Um, not only myself, but Brother Richard, uh, Elder Doug, Brother Shane, all of us, they mean it, bro, we, we've been over this thing, if not one time, but a thousand times. So we not know Johnny come lately to this stuff um, or none of this stuff. And none of this is new to us. It's just that now I'm getting a, a very good copy out there so that we, the Israelites, are no longer confused. Um, so that people can see the truth and what it really truly is without all these pagan NIV satanic Bible verses being quoted um, and, and, and all these other mess and junk that's put into it. So we just making it plain. So that's how all of that came about. And that's the reason why that the Easter fraud chart is put up on the front page. I'm also... Got a few other charts, a few other things I'm working on uh, that I'll get to Brother Steve. We got to handle one thing at a time to vamp up and keep the website going. Uh, myself and Brother Steve are working diligently behind the scenes to put a live radio broadcast on um, the straightway, straightwaytruth.com. Reason being is because we're going to archive and put a lot of old sermons on there. And then anytime I want, I can break into the radio broadcast. I can go over there to the broadcast thing and just preach and teach. For about an hour or so if necessary. Um, so if you're around the house, you're doing work or you're in a garage or whatever, you can always have that computer going. You can take it with you and you'll have a live radio broadcast that will be there for your listening pleasure. That's what that's all about. I hope that many of you are over there getting on freespeak.net, um, freespeak.net. But we're doing everything that we can to expand the word. Uh, because I'm going to tell you right now, I don't have a lick of confidence in YouTube. YouTube hates my guts. Um, they hate the truth that that, that comes out, um, and 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 I'm gonna start using Vimo, and because uh, I have to pay for Vimo, it's a subscribe thing. I'm gonna start using all these other different outlets, um, so that we can make sure that, that we hedge ourselves against um, places like YouTube in case they wanna boot old Pastor Dow because they don't like my theology and doctrine of Christ uh, that I speak and teach. Um, so we have to make sure that you, you, and you. Uh, we'll we know what to do. That's why it's very important for y'all to stay in contact and stay in touch because you never know what are you going to do one day if you look up and you think that you're getting ready to go check out Pastor Donald on YouTube and then all of a sudden you found out that they done got rid of me. Now how are you going to communicate with us? How are you going to get in touch with us if you're not in touch with us and you're not communicating with us to stay in touch? Hallelujah. But that's how we do that. Glory to the King. All right. Let's go to... um. Brother Ron, New Jersey, 856. Come on with it, Brother Ron. What you got, my brother? Shalom, Pastor. Shalom, Straightway Saints. Shalom, uh, Saints that's uh, scattered, on, uh, scattered abroad. Shalom. Just calling, um, just calling to check in with all the saints, Pastor, and um, continuing the faith, you know, just trying to figure out everything, figure out everything in the Word, take it in, because... You know, as much oil as we can get as possible, we need it for the, for these last days. I mean, a lot of times, you know, I, I sit back and I think about how things are going to play out and so on and so forth. But the main thing is, the main thing is that oil. You definitely need that oil on you just to keep you going and, and, and to be prepared for whatever may come about since none of us know exactly what the Most High has planned out for each one of our paths. That's right. You know, but it's, it's pretty deep. Like Brother, Brother Rufus was saying, you know, delivery, deliverance isn't going to be around forever. It's not going to be here forever. It's, it's a certain amount of time, just like His mercy, you know, you, you better... Shape, shape up. Hallelujah. You know, it's getting, it's getting hard. Yes, sir. Things is just like you try to figure out exactly. Um, because what it is, like it's, like you say, it's a thin line. It's a thin line that we walk on. It's a very, very thin line. And 
the most high is all about business. He doesn't got time for games and when he when he when he when he does have a sense of humor, it's not the type of sense of humor we have. It's he laughs and then he destroys something. So it's you know, it's, it's a very thin line between between righteous, unrighteous and the line that we walk is dangerous. Dangerous. Hallelujah. All right, uh, good good hearing your voice, brother Ron. Yep, you you too, Pastor. Uh, once again, shalom to all the brothers and sisters out there, and uh, stay in the faith and bless you. All right, bless you. Be encouraged. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. All right, good in from Brother Ron. Let's go to Sister Demarius there in New York, 917. Come on, Sister Demarius. How you doing? Are you there, Sister Demarius? Um, Demarius. Woo, boy, we got a bad connection, Sister. How you doing? Uh-oh. I can hear you now. Just go ahead and talk. Ooh, boy, bless her heart. We'll try to come back to you, Sister Demarius. It's a bad, bad connection, and we'll come back to you after a few calls, okay? Uh, 705, Ontario, Canada, Ontario, Canada. Pastor Dow, what you got? Shalom, Pastor. It's Steve here up in Canada, Brother Steve. Hey, bless you, brother. Can you hear me okay? Yep, yep, hear you fine. Oh, uh Fabulous. I just want to say thank you for the great sermon you had yesterday. It was off the chart, if I tell you. And I just want to let you know <clears throat> that we had a uh, new Israelite sister that was with us uh, watching the uh, Shabbat service. And now, Louia, everyone is seems and looking like they're starting to wake up here in uh, in Canada. It's uh, it's quite a blessing. Hallelujah. That's good. Oh. Uh, it is beautiful, and um, <clears throat> you were talking about the uh, the chart, uh, the Great Easter fraud. Right. That uh, really opened my eyes on on the, uh, the the three days and the three nights, and to uh, to be involved and, and to underst and get that understanding, and then be able to illustrate it properly. It, it just opened my eyes about the whole fraud. I I didn't understand how far, how deep it was until I was able to put my hands in there and actually put the numbers together. So um, I really, really thank you for uh, having us involved with that. And uh, it's something I will always want to be involved and very blessed to be able to do that and, and to be able to share that information that is, needs to be out there, the whole truth. I tell you what, brother Steve, we we went through a lot of communication to get that chart out, didn't we? Yes, sir. It was <laughs> it was uh, back and forth, and and it's so important. And you have sometimes, and 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 can, this one would be the one is you have a one good shot, and you want to head out there, and you want to head out of the park, right? And you did. Well, thank you for all your labor of love, you and Sister Wenda. Um, Sister Carol looked at it and said, man, that was a good idea that Sister Wenda put in there when she drew that red line in there and put the time frame in there. That was very good. Oh, yeah, but the, the connection, um, putting everything in red, what was really popping out, like just trying to pop them out so people can see and the consistency throughout the whole page. And, you know, sometimes you need that little extra emphasis. Yes, sir. Yeah, I I do have a question here. I do have a uh, a, a couple of uh, truth seeking, um, uh, say Christians looking at the truth, and we have them here. I'm outside, actually. I'm out here right at the lake, and I'm looking upon the beautiful stars up in the sky, and I thank the Most High for everything. I <laughs> it's it's beautiful. The que <clears throat> question is, is that when uh, when Jesus was uh, nailed to the tree, uh -huh. and then there was two gentlemen, and one, and that was the question that was asked, and I would like to ask you this, is how did the thief get saved, even though, or was he ever baptized? Well, first of all, the Bible said you're clean through the word. 
And that's what I went over yesterday in Shabbat service also as well, that, you know, a lot of people, they get baptized, but then they turn around and go to a dirty life. And so that baptism really means nothing. Baptism is just a, it just shows a significance. It shows a sign outwardly of what something should have taken place inwardly when you're cleaned by the word of the most high. And remember, Jesus was the word of Yah made flesh. So, and, and if him being the word of Yah made flesh, which is he is, and Yah is a spirit, that means that was God himself in the flesh, uh, his spirit up there with Jesus Christ flesh hanging on that tree that, hey, if he wants to save somebody that's sitting there on the cross and said, this day you'll be with me in paradise, that is his prerogative. He can do that. But all of us who got our feet on this earth, we better go through the steps. <laughs> Hallelujah. So he... He was he was blessed. So, how much closer can you get to the Most High than to be hung right beside him and just ask and for that forgiveness through the eyes of Yah directly? It's uh, it's phenomenal. It's, it's it's a beautiful thing. It's a blessing. It's a blessing if people could do that, you know. Uh, but he had the opportunity to do that, and Jesus gave it to him. So I'm sure that that man's happy. <laughs> Oh yes! <laughs> oh man, Hallelujah! I I have a I, okay, and I have another question from okay. uh, from a, a new sister, and was <clears throat> uh, when people uh, um, you know you have a choice if you want to be cremated and such like that, mm -hmm. and I now don't believe that you should be. Um, do you are you s saved? even though you were cremated, or it's always because you have the faith. Or uh, the question is, is, is being cremated uh, a negative thing? Um, I know it says, let the dead bury the dead, but the oh, question is, is, are you able to be saved even though that you're cremated? Well, first of all, your body, your natural body, are you following me? Um, you, you, it's, going, it's going back to the dust of the earth no matter which way it goes. But if you look at our customs, the Hebraic customs is, is burial. We bury our saints. Um, but, hey, yes. when the breath go out of your body, that's that's when your time is up. Nobody, hey, your, your spirit don't know what's going on with that body because that spirit is going to return to the Father providing that you are with the Most High. So, you know, as far as cremation or burying or any of that, as far as that, it's totally irrelevant when it comes to salvation because there ain't no such thing as uh, it sounds like someone who may have had a little bit of Catholic background, but but that has nothing to do with it. You know, a lot of times the Catholics would say if somebody committed suicide, you chop their head off and stuff because, um, you know, they're going to be walking through purgatory. They got all these superstitions and stuff. But when the spirit leaves the body, that is it. It's cut dry and done. It's up to those of us that are left alive to make sure that as an Israelite, you receive a proper burial. And cremation is not mentioned in the scriptures for us. Yes, sir, I understand that. Okay, that's great. Uh, thanks for asking, answering those questions. It's, uh, I know there's a lot of uh, doctrines out there. It's really hard to uh, tear down for, for many. Uh, for ourselves, it's, it's been quite easy because we weren't actually in too much of the church at all. So we just had the spirit of the truth, and, and it led us to, to Yah and and uh, Epec, and I'm just uh, just so honored and humbled to for that to happen, and I uh, I thank the Most High for that. Hallelujah! Well, yeah. Hallelujah. I I want to say one thing too. Sorry, um, I just want to let everyone know that there's uh, uh, Brother Paul has put up a, a very intriguing, very detailed uh, video that explains uh, taking the uh, your poster of the uh, the Easter fraud, the Great Easter fraud. And uh, you take a look on YouTube, and he's uh, gone to uh, uh, some depth and explained it as well uh, verbally on video. So it would be really good for all the saints to take a look at that as well. And Brother Paul has done a really nice job of it as well. All right, bro, Steve. Thank you, my pastor. God bless you. All right. Shalom. Shalom. All right. Where are we at now? Brother Caprice in Iowa. Five one five. Come on with it, brother Caprice. What you got, brother? Hey, shalom, Pastor Dow. Shalom. Great shalom, to hear shalom. from you. Shalom, shalom. Good to hear from you. Uh, I just had a uh, another uh, want to be a witness to you again. 
I want to say to the Saints and to the other people out there who are not uh, listening, you better listen to the pastor, what he's saying about preparedness and and, and storing food and, and medicine and things like that. Because that, uh, I don't, I don't think you really touch on the medicine aspect of it too. You know, people, you know, you got meds or whatever, or your kids need medicine. If you can't get to the store to get to those medicines, and it's winter time now, what are you going to do? If you ain't got some, you know, uh, cough syrup or something in the house, aspirin, whatever. You know, I know here in Iowa we got a lot of tornadoes come through, so. You know, if a tornado wipe out the whole town and, and you can't get them trucks through because we got one or two roads, you know, if you don't have some kind of supply store somewhere, you're going to be in trouble. So I just wanted to say that too, Pastor. And uh, I want to say hello to all the saints. And I had a question on uh, um, spiritual uh, aspect um, with protocol. Sure. Um, uh, another testimony I want to say to you, too, what you said in the Shabbat service, me and my house, we're in covenant with you. So you have somebody. Hallelujah. Alone and all the way in Iowa <laughs> in covenant. But uh, protocol, and uh, I don't know if you, if you got the, uh, the word right there, Revelations 1 and 2, uh -huh. where uh, the Father is talking, and uh, he's saying that uh, uh, about protocol, First the Father, the Son, then the angels give the uh, give the uh, the um, the angels give the uh, I'm trying to think of the word gives the testimony to the Israelites, and the Israelites give the information to the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. it, uh, can you kind of explain that in, in, in protocol? Uh, because uh, there's some scriptures also like in Acts 10, 1 through 6, when Cornelius is on the road, and the angel could have easily, uh, when he came upon Cornelius, gave him the word or whatnot, but he let he let Paul uh, talk to him. So, you know, like protocol, like you were saying, like, can you kind of explain what that means? Sure. Because well, you don't really talk about no angels before. Because usually you say the Father, the Son, then the Israelites. Right. But where's the angels in this aspect in this? Well, the angels, brother, are helpers to us um, in many, many different ways, especially in spiritual warfare. And they're there to help us to minister this gospel. But they are not there to help us to... Uh, they're not there to do the gospel themselves. This gospel must be preached by someone who's been redeemed. You see, the angels mm -hmm. have never had flesh and blood in them. So therefore, they can't minister and preach this gospel. Uh, you know, like the Most High, he has laws that he has bound himself by, both naturally and spiritually, if you understand what I mean. And he has made yes. sure that he doesn't go past those laws. So the reason why that the angel was given direction to tell him what to do, because he knew that Peter would go and tell them about the Messiah, but... Yeah, they're limited in a lot of things. And one of them is they can't preach this gospel, brother. It has to be by someone who has been redeemed. Right. And I, I even I even found that with uh with Matthew fifteen when um the woman uh came to uh, Matthew fifteen, twenty one, twenty eight when he was she was trying to talk to to Christ about her daughter. Uh -huh. She even knew protocol, even when he put her in a place saying that he wasn't there. He's there for the lost sheep of Israel. Right. And that she even knew protocol when she said, well, even the dogs get the crumbs. She even knew that she had to wait till everybody else got it. Right. So that, that, that was interesting. And my last question, Pastor, is in, um, uh, in Genesis 2, 15 through 16, when um, Yah is handing out his commandments, is that is that Yeshua Jesus doing the work? Because I notice in the in the Bible, anytime he says, you know, um, anytime he, he says, uh, and and it, and it's and it's written or it said, that's you know, that's authority. Is 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 when he's doing the creation? Is that is that Yeshua doing all the work? Is he commanding Yeshua to do the work? No, no, no. They're not two separate entities. I'll give you an example. Now, over in Genesis, the first chapter, okay? Uh, let okay. me see if I can go down here. Uh, the very first, the, uh, Genesis one twenty six, and it says this. 
And Yah said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth on the earth. Then verse 27 give you the answer. So Yah created man in his own image and in, his, and in the image of Yah created he him male and female created he them. So it's maybe saying, let us, it could be talking to the host of heaven, but he is the one, he is the only creator. And so when you're dealing with Jesus, you're dealing with the father, you're dealing with the father, you're dealing with the creator. They're all one. They're all one. They're not separate individuals. They, what, what you're dealing with is three different manifestations of the father. You're dealing with him okay. because remember, Yah is a spirit. But see, right. in order for the world to understand Yah, to see what it takes to be a sacrifice, and Yah had to come doing himself, he had to prepare himself and make himself a body. It was that body that we know as Yahshua HaMashiach to be the sacrificial lamb, the lamb of Yah, that taketh away the sins of the world. But make no mistake about it, that spirit that was inside of that body of Yahshua was the father 100%. Okay, that was that's what I had, Pastor. And uh, another question: uh, the shirts did uh, did you send any to Iowa, Carol? Did you? Sister Carol wants to know: Can you wear the four X? Oh yeah, I can. Yep. <laughs> okay. He All said, right. She well, said, thank you, Pastor. She says, "No problem. Uh, you should be checking in the mail then first first week." All right. Uh, I love you all, you saints. I want to say thank you. Uh, keep me in our prayers. Uh, Pastor, yeah, I was looking on uh, YouTube today at some videos. You see people in New York buying matches, a pack of matches for $10. $10? Brother, can a pack of 20 matches. Brother, can you send me $10. that? Brother Caprice, can you send me that video? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Send me that yeah. video by way of YouTube, brother. See, yeah, that's, I don't know if it's on YouTube. I don't know if I can do YouTube, but I think I could do uh, MSN. It's, I think it's like an MSN article. Just send me the link. But yeah, send, send me the ten dollars for matches, brother. That's that's for leasing the people in in the middle of a distress. Hey, that's our nation, brother. A nation of greed, capitalizing oh, yeah. on other people's misfortunes. That's our wicked nation, brother. I think I could find somebody with some with a fire somewhere. I could stick my stick in and get a little light before I spend ten dollars. <laughs> That's ridiculous. All right, All right Pastor. I love you. Shalom. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Man, that is utterly ridiculous. $10 for a book of... Y'all see? Y'all see what I keep trying to tell y'all about humanity? And, and and many of you still have not went and looked at that movie Defiance. I don't even know if you can handle it. I told you a long, 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 long time ago to go look at that movie Defiance. And the reason why I tell you that, because I want you to see your nature. I want you to see what happens to the human psyche when conveniences are taken away from you. And most of you have never even been in a position to be challenged like that. And you surely are not working on your spiritual condition right now, especially when you, if you're not working to be sanctified. See, you need to know the human psyche. You need to know what your spirit is capable of when things go awry and when civil unrest is all around. You need to know that. And most of you don't know, you got that slanted third eye, that spirit of suspicion, that spirit of betrayal working in you. You will betray your brothers and sisters. You will step over them just to feed your selfish self. It's a sad, sad thing. Most of you have not even a clue what your human nature is capable of without the Messiah and without dying daily like this word says and being transformed by the renewing of your mind. Man, I tell you. Uh, say, uh, uh, look like Sister Sierra sent me say Yahoo had an article about people selling gas fifty dollars a gallon in New York, and then we want to complain about our government price gouging. See, that's that's your fellow Americans, huh? That's your fellow Americans. It's sad, isn't it? Oh boy, let me finish up these phone calls here. Oklahoma, four zero five. This pastor died. What you got? Hello, Pastor. My name is Jackie, and this is my first time calling in. I've actually watched your YouTube videos for like a year, but unfortunately, I never 
um, called or wrote or really put anything into action until yesterday wow. when I listened to the four-hour service. But um, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Plus, I'm on my husband's cell phone, and I have to give that to him because he has to go to work in a few minutes. But um, one of the questions I had was about Exodus 23, 13. After watching yesterday's service, I went over to Sister Maya's video where she linked it to the Torah Institute when it was talking about the um, gifts and everything that most Americans celebrate. I, the more that I learn, the more I don't trust using certain words and terms. Yep. But, no, like fearfully, though. Right. I'm not sure what to do with that. Even down to um, Julius Caesar and changing how everyone counts time. Like, how do you, I'm not sure... What do you do after you're aware of that when naturally, when you speak, what you've been taught is what comes off your lips? Well, here's straightway, sister, what we do, for instance, the days of the week, we don't call them by the days that the world are familiar with, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We call them first day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, and that's how we speak amongst ourselves as Israelites. Um, and when we're dealing with the months, we just deal with the first month, second month, third month, fourth month, fifth month of the year. And what it is, is you're, you're, you're in a society, uh, like for me as a preacher, if I'm going to reach people, I've got to use terms that they're familiar with. But I'm not uh, using this in a means to turn, because if I talk to them in, in, in the Hebraic way, the way that I talk and the way that I understand, I can't draw people out of Christianity if you understand what I mean. So when, you, I, when you're in this, oh, when, you, when you're first, when you're in this and you're coming new into this, you try to abstain from those as much as you can, if possible, until it's totally eradicated out of your mind. Because remember, look at Elijah. Elijah had to speak against Baal, and Baal was a false god. Baal was a false god, mm -hmm. and he had to actually call his name up on Mount Carmel for the people to understand and to see and, and to know. So it depends on the perspective and the way that people look at this in order to understand how to go forward with it. Okay, but I'm I'm referring to like when I'm speaking or like if I'm trying to talk to my husband about something that I've read, I will accidentally use a word that I shouldn't. And when I know the meaning, like the more I learn and I know what I'm doing, like is there anything that I'm supposed to do or say am I supposed to repent or like what are you supposed to do? When you do um, go against what Exodus twenty three thirteen says, no, because you're not. Or is there anything you do? Because you're not doing it. Uh, you're not doing it, sister. Um, um, you're not doing it because you want to. Well, if you're going to use it for a teaching tool, there's nothing wrong with it. The, actually, that word circumspect is in your Hebrew eighty one o four, which means to keep, to guard, to observe, or to take heed. That's what that word keep means in uh, Exodus twenty three. 13, when it says to make no mention, are you following me? It says to call to memory or to recall or call to mind. Are you following me? It's not actually talking about the actual speech in itself. It's just talking about memory, recall, and calling to mind. So you have to get familiar with looking behind the words that you're reading that is presented to us in English so that you can bring a good, a viable point and bring it with clarity. Okay. Am I making sense? Okay. Yes, you are. That makes me feel a lot better because I was really, it's a very hard habit to break. Right. When automatically that's what you think. Um, and then I have one last question. Okay. I have two boys and they're three and five. Both of them have autism. Mm. And for a long time, like I felt really angry about it and I was upset about it and I didn't understand it. And now that I've been reading the word and learning more, I realized that during both pregnancies and even um, up until maybe this last year, I was deceived. And, you know, in America, they say you don't have to eat healthy. You don't have to. Um, and when I say eat healthy, I mean I eat healthy, but not according to the book. But I didn't know that at the time. So I ate pork. I ate ham um, when they were born. I breastfed for a little while, then they were on formula the majority of the time. How do you 
correct that. And, and when I mean that, it's like when I've tried to seek out medical advice, like one of the things I saw was wormwood, um, was something that was supposed to help with parasites. Then reading, and I realized what wormwood is, then it's like, should I just not try to um, fix that situation with natural means? You can try to fix anything with natural means. So, well, first thing I'll do, I will repent. I will repent in my ignorance because that's what the Bible says for some of the things, the way I lived, the way I carried myself. And now it's only because it sounds like, did you get your children vaccinated? I sure did. Yeah. My mother was the registered nurse. She got all five of her kids vaccinated. And when I was pregnant with um, our oldest child, she passed away. So there wasn't a female figure to say, this is what you're supposed to do. Right. But I did. And I also did repent because I do realize that that's because of my error. And then I would break the curses of those vaccinations off those children. And so I'm going to tell you, you've you got some diligent praying that you're going to have to do in order to break through that kind of spirit because they are putting some stuff in these vaccines that is just off the chain today. I know. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that then. I know that now, though. Right. Are you planning on having any more? Uh, if, you know, I'm blessed, if that's what's supposed to happen, absolutely. And right. I wouldn't do any of those things again at all. Hallelujah. Sister Jackie, it is good hearing from you. And I'm glad. What inspired you to call after listening to me for one year? I don't, I really don't know. Um, <laughs> I had been speaking to my sister and I kept saying that I felt like I was in, tr in, in transition. I felt like something big was going to happen. I didn't know if it was going to be, you know, pregnancy. I didn't know if it was going to be a change in jobs for my husband moving or what it was. And I don't know. I just, it just woke up. I've been watching your, anytime you upload a video, I watch it. But for whatever reason, um, yesterday I just moved. I'm glad that you did because you need to make yourself known, you and your husband, especially with this Israelite family, because the way that things are going in this world today you need to, to do everything you can to build relationships with faithful people and start to try to uh, develop mutual assistant groups. Yeah. And I that's something, too, that's very difficult to do when you haven't really come across a lot of um, trustworthy or decent people. If you... Um, um, especially... Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say that's difficult for me and my husband because I was raised by my mother, a single parent. She passed away. He was raised by his father, a single parent. He passed away. So the people that we do come across, it's more of a social distant relationship because you can't trust a lot of people. Right. So Should be able to do that with Israelites. That's the reason why I constantly tell people to build relationships and especially if you notice if you've been listening to us the whole, a whole year, have you been watching the, the services for a whole year? Mm-hmm. Well, if you notice... I've been not watching the ones that are on the online church, but I've went back into your YouTube um, services, yes. But yesterday was the first time I um, worshipped with the Sabbath and watched the service that you had in your online church. Oh, boy, you really got a good one then, didn't you? Mm-hmm. I did. I had to really, really check myself with a lot of things, especially when you were talking about the Jezebel spirit. And if you can't call um, your husband master, what does that mean? And it was very difficult. And I told him, I was like, I'm going to do this because Pastor Dow said do this and because, you know, I want to obey Yah. And it was difficult. And it's still difficult. But I have to ask myself, why is it difficult? Right. So, I mean, you don't have to go around calling master all day long. But if sometimes you can't just walk up to him and say it, then you know Jezebel's working. <laughs> right. And that's what I was telling him. Because he was like, no, you don't have to do that. And I was like, you don't understand how uncomfortable and how what roused up to me with the idea of even saying it. Tell him what so he needs to do. not a big deal. Tell him what he needs to do. Know, okay. Yeah, tell him what he needs to do in order to get an understanding of where you're coming from is actually try to uh, make himself sit down and listen to the message. I'll have it up until Bible study, until scripture study next week. And and then he'll understand okay. he'll understand where you're coming from. Okay. I'll I'll ask him to do that. Sister, it's good hearing from you. 
Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Stay in touch. I will. Shalom. Shalom. Bye. Bye bye. Boy, it sure is good hearing from these brand new Israelites. Is it not? Is it not brand new? Is it not good hearing from these brand new Israelites? People all the time coming in. All the time coming. It's a beautiful thing. I hope, hey, all you people in the chat room, did y'all get my understanding of the difference between covenant and agreement? Brother Caprice got it. Brother Caprice understood it. Hallelujah. I hope we understand that. Let me try uh, Sister Demarius again in New York. 917. Come on, Sister. What you got? Shalom, Pastor. Can you hear me this time? I can hear you very well, Sister. Oh, praise God. Um, okay, well, shalom to you, Pastor. Shalom to the saints. Shalom, Sister Carol. I hope that everyone is well and blessed. Um, I, I'm just listening to all of the conversations, the phone calls that have come in, and so many different things have, you know, just come into my heart and my mind. But um, I'll just try and stick to my original questions. Okay. Um, so my first question is how how do you break generational curses? I mean, because even though, you know, now I'm in truth, there's this, this aspect of there's a strong Jezebel spirit in my house. So um, I want to know how, you know, even though I'm, I'm not, I don't want to be a part of that and I don't want to, you know, take on that, that spirit, how is it possible to break generational curses? Whatever you find out that you're being challenged by or whatever sin that maybe uh, you're having difficulty with, you're going to have to find out to see if it's something, you know, you can tell if it's something running your generations because it's something that, you know, only don't go be asking your generation what's going on, but you simply just find out what you're being harassed, tempted, driven, and tormented by. You simply repent of that, and then you just say the words in the name of Jesus. I, I break this generational curse. I renounce this sin off the sin. I renounce the sins of my fathers. And I break this curse of lust off my generations and my, my family line in Jesus' name. That's how you do it. But you mean business. Everything is by confession in this, sister. Everything. Okay. That, that, that's all I needed. I mean, that's, that's the best answer that that I could receive right now because I'm definitely doing that every single day. Just like, you know what, Father, just, nope, take that out. Take that out too, <laughs> you know. Um, so my next question is what, well, being that I'm new to the walk, um, but I do have a little bit of experience, you know, um, with keeping Shabbat and Ian clean, what do you think is, from this point, what do you think is the best way for me to prepare? Because I don't know, you know, I've been calling in up to straightway and kind of, you know, trying to let you know about my situation, my current situation. And um, just what do, you, what do you think is the best way to prepare? Number I know one, that's kind of a heavy question, but. Well, the best way to prepare, number one, is have faith, have it to yourself, walk in humility, and one day at a time. And when you prepare, see, in order to prepare right, the first step in preparation is the heart. You have to prepare your heart. And remember, God resists the proud, but he gives grace unto the humble. So you have to prepare this heart first. And then the mind will follow right along. And then with that mind falling right along, then, he, then you'll have more of, an, of, of a mindset to be able to hear, receive, and accept the truth. And then you can walk in the newness of life from there. And then you can go ahead and start. Uh, every time you go to the store, your mind will be right to buy a canned good or buy something or store some food or store some water. Um, but that's how you prepare first, sister, is the heart. Okay. So um, even though... You know, I'm not in my own space. I can still prepare by, you know, buying buying goods and canned goods and food like that, and kind of storing it in my own my own space. Yes. You yes. know what I mean? Yeah, you can do that without taking over the house and and and, and going against somebody else's wishes. You can do it um, discreetly, a little bit of time. Hey, with one person, you can store enough to um, and and still not clutter up your place to, in order to be able to provide you food from three to six months. Okay. Okay. 
Um, and just one last, it's kind of like a comment. I just want to say thank you, Pastor. I, I want to honestly say thank you for, you know, allowing the Most High to use you because there's not many, there's very few real pastors out here that, you know, will, will give it to you straight. And I, you know, most people are, are probably offended by your delivery, but from the beginning, I was one of those that was just like, yep, that's how it needs to be said. You know, we just, we're, we're losing time. We're, you know, time is not on our side. So we really need to kind of buckle down and be disciplined and we need to be serious about the word. So I just, I, I truly do appreciate everything that you're, that you're doing. And although, you know, even, there might be times when I get upset about something or, you know, frustrated about something, but I, I, I genuinely do appreciate, you know, the ministry. I appreciate the brethren for encouraging me and, and uplifting me because this, you know, a lot of the time you feel like you're alone, especially if you're not in an area where there are a lot of Israelites. But, right. yeah, that's, that's all I wanted to say. Well, Sister Damaris, it's good hearing from you, sister. Um, you be encouraged, okay? And thank you for the kind words. All right. Bless you, Pastor. Shalom. Bless you, Shalom. All right, Saints. We've had a good uh, first day broadcast. Actually, oh, we're in second day now. We had a good second day broadcast. It's amazing how that time, just like Brother Rufus said, changes, isn't it? Good second day broadcast today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, glory to the King. Hey, I appreciate you. I appreciate each and every last one of you. Search your hearts and see if you're in covenant agreement with us here straightway because we believe in covenant and we believe that with all of our heart. I don't believe in hypocrites and stage play. If you can't be in covenant, you definitely don't need to be with us. I mean, we, a covenant is like a marriage to us. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. And you need to search your heart to see if you really truly in covenant with us, because I promise you, we're going to be doing this all the way up until the king come or until he take us home, and we're very serious about this. Glory to the king. So search your heart, see if you are in agreement or you in a covenant. Glory to the king. That way we can stop all this running around and jumping around and moving around all over the place. Like we got Brother Juan and Sister Rainey in there. Hallelujah. They definitely have added a blessing to the ministry and stuff. Don't y'all just love those songs Sister Rainey be singing? She makes all them songs up herself. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? Just like we do it straight away. We make up all our own songs. She even got an album out that she did a long, long time ago. Sounds good too. I was listening to some of it today, the other day. Um, as a matter of fact, I got, I got a favorite on there. I don't even know how to come across one of my favorites. Uh, it's this one right here. Hell in my time of need. 
too hallelujah i tell you what the theory said he got a studio and he liked to have a jam session with us <laughs> i tell you what when you got sister rainy singing like that and sister carol boy i tell y'all better watch out now y'all better watch out whoa you better watch out the devil better watch out hallelujah we're gonna get the anointing falling into place you know what we're gonna do a service one day we're going to petition the Most High Yah to talk to us, speak to us. Hallelujah. We talking about tear dropping on our knees and on our face, worshiping the Father. Hallelujah. I love them all, but that's definitely one of my favorites right there. Glory to the King. Hallelujah. Got so many of them, Sister Rainey does. Got so many of them. They come up with new ones all the time. So we bless the Father for it. Hey, saints. Y'all be encouraged, okay? Y'all have a wonderful week. Remember, let the ads play. Stay in touch. Be encouraged. Forsake sin. Keep the commandments. Keep them in your thoughts. The forefront of your mind. Pray for your pastor, the saints here at Straightway. Each and every last one of you. I bless you all. And I wish peace, shalom upon each and every last one of you. This week, while we're in this diaspora, separated one for another, because one day we're going to be in the new Jerusalem. Names written down in the Lamb's Book of Life, dignitaries, hallelujah, rulers of this earth for 1,000 years. I bless each and every last one of you in the sweet, precious, and strong, and victorious, and mighty overcoming name of our soon coming King, Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. Have a very nice and wonderful week. Shalom, the King is coming. We're going to get a hold of your theory. Hallelujah.
Uh-oh, look at them looking. 